previously on Onboard Lifestyle. The captain heads to Tapachula to have a specialist look at his elbow. They were so nice. So nice. The crew takes a dinghy flotilla up the local estuary before having a nice lunch on a polluted beach with fellow cruisers. It's really heartbreaking seeing all this garbage. Then we have an honest sit-down conversation to discuss our travel plans over the next few months. So let's pick up our story in Marina Chiapas as this crew settles into our new short-term home. When I'll be coming home Then I'll be at your door When I'll be coming home I plan to let you know The longing of my heart The wish I carry high We are all set. Just got back from the marina and it is now confirmed that we are going on our first tour. This is something that we have never really done before because we always go off on our own and do our own thing. But this time we decided we're going to have Miguel, the tour guide, show us a little bit of Chiapas. I put a word out to everybody in the marina to see if anybody would like to join us and it looks like we have a full house. So. First thing tomorrow, Miguel is gonna pick us up and uh, we are uh, on a new adventure. Super excited. So early the next morning, we piled 10 people into an air conditioned van and headed to our first stop about 40 minutes away. Our tour guide, Miguel, filled the time by educating the group about the local history and explaining the flora and fauna of the region. We were told not to eat breakfast because our first stop would be a culinary treat that Miguel promised would not disappoint. And it didn't. Okay, here we are. We just have to knock the door. <laughs> but of course, it's delicious, okay? So, every bucket has holds at about 250, 300 tamales and they do it this every day. So now is the perfect time. Buenos dias, ¿cómo están? Because what we are watching is the way that they preparate the tamales, okay? So, you see here, buenas, buenas. They are the different kind of chilies, the chicken, all, eat, all the ingredients that they have on the leaves. But that's not only banana leaves, but another leaf that we call hoja de blanca, white leaf, okay? So not that's every the leaf, white leaf, yeah, the white leaf is that one, this is banana leaf. and that's banana leaf, and that is because we can use, buenos dias, we can use uh, all the leaves because they change, it would change the flavor of the tamal, so this one has, are special for that, okay? So it is also here, this is the mole, this is the mole, they already go the, the tamal, what we are going to do is all the mass, and then after we are do, we are going to do this like yeah. a basket, like si a small queremos, basket. Este es un recado. And that's the the kind of the mole, the Ajá, different one that we call in Spanish guajillo. recado. Is with chile guajillo. Y este es mole, pero and, lleva guajillo, este no lleva mulato y pasilla. And that so mole es otro chile. has another ingredient: mulato, chile mulato, chile pasilla, and some other more. So they put it the chicken, they put yeah. it the recado, Ajá. like it's like a the brown aquí, mole. Then after. The point is that we have to close everything. You see? Looks like empanada. See? Looks like that one. But this is the way that they mostly, in general, they prepare the tamales. Okay? So then after they wrap it in the banana leaf. And voila, you have the tamal there, okay? When we cook, they will be already cooked and it will be wrapped, okay? So that's, that's the way. The, the point here is the ingredients. And she's the most successful lady here in the region because she has a very good taste for her food, okay? So that's what it is. They do all this thing. Yeah, they have a very good, very good tamal. Yeah, yes. that's beef. Yeah, that's beef. With mole. With, with mole, huh? With the mole. Good? Mm. Good? Mm. 
was so good. It is so good. Like quail. It was so tender. <laughs> That's how you know it's time to eat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The point is that put the rice inside of the tortilla and then after the mole. Okay, that's the way that they taste. All right, I'll try it. Okay, I'll, I'll make a small one for you. Okay, specialty. That's good. There's so much flavor in all this. I'm gonna miss Mexico when we leave. Yes. So we were talking to Miguel, our uh, guide, and he was telling us on a slow day, this place will sell about a thousand tamales. And on holidays or any other busy time, up to 10,000 tamales she will make out of this kitchen. You're rolling me back to the van here. <laughs> it is unbelievable, but definitely going to stop here again. Best tamales I've had in my life. That's what I'm saying. It's just amazing. Folk. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a quick 10 minute drive to the next stop, the pre Mayan Izapa archaeological site that dates back to 1500 BC. Okay, here we go. So, this archaeological site was found in 1500 before Jesus. In the science says 1250. But uh, our teacher, Garth Norman, who was from New World Archaeological Foundation, he uh, Teach us that this uh, it is from 1500, almost at the same period of the Olmecs. Okay, from here, unfortunately, it's very clouded. But what we see in the horizon, we see this. Oh, see my picture? So you can take picture over my picture. I mean, you're not cheating. You were here. <laughs> wow. So this is the view, oh. and that's the Takana Volcano. And Takana means Casa de Fuego. You know what I mean? House of Fire. Could you please help me to translate, Ali? <laughs> Casa de Fuego. <laughs> and Quetzalcoatl took a canoe and lost in the sea. But he promised that he will return to central Mexico to recover his throne. And in the Aztec premonitions, they say that in the year of 1519, Quetzalcoatl will return to central Mexico to recover his throne. And guess who appears in the year of 1519 in the coastal range of the state of Veracruz, Mexico? Hernán Cortés, Spanish, ah. white ones. Yeah. Bearded. Ooh. They were thinking that the man and the horse were one. So that's for this. When the indigenous people ask Hernán Cortés, are you Quetzalcoatl? Hernán Cortés says, yes, I'm yes, Quetzalcoatl. Yes, I am. <laughs> but not because his wisdom, but because of an indigenous princess who was with him, with him called La Malinche or Doña Marina, okay? Even we have a term here in Mexico, still we have that term, that if you like more the things from, not from your country, for example, oh, I love hamburgers and I don't like tamales, we say, ah, you're a Malinchista. I mean, you prefer the foreign things. The that foreign you, okay? Things. So it's a, it's a term that we have here. So Doña Marina or La Malinche tell Hernán Cortés, better pass a sagata than a warrior because you will be successful. And that's for this, the Aztec Empire, access, Aztec Empire falls very quickly because not only the 500 Spanish that goes there or a little bit more, but the dozen of thousand of the indigenous people who joined the Spanish because they were subjugated by the Aztecs. So they finally defeat the Aztec Empire, they surrounded Tenochtitlan and they defeat the Aztec Empire. And here, this area, where you are right now, Puerto Chiapas, Tapachula, were called, long time ago, in the Aztec times, were called Soconusco, okay? Well, Soconusco means prickly pear place. And the Soconusco was the last Aztec settlement, which spans to part of Guatemala. 
Then, just like that, our group was loaded back into the van for the long drive to our next destination. That is, after we stop for a little roadside snack. Our next stop took us one and a half hours to the northeast, near the town of El Aguila to the Cascade de la Serena. At an elevation of over 4,000 feet, the temperatures were mild as we had cloud cover both above and below us. The steep winding roads were wet with rain and lined with students walking home from school. It was a unique experience to see them trudge up the steep roads, seemingly to and from nowhere. It was perfect timing to get to the falls. The group was anxious to stretch their legs, and the short hike through the lush scenic jungle was just what we needed. We are walking in the middle of the coffee farm. Plant. These are all coffee. Where? These. This is? Yeah. And they're all over the hills, and somebody comes out and they own these plants. Because this one is owned by the community, so they harvest all this, this area. It's a community yeah. coffee bean. Yeah. Nice. So it's it's complicated to harvest the coffee. So, so most of these plants we're seeing are coffee yeah, then? Coffee, yeah. La Cascadia de la Serena was spectacular. We were in the basin of the falls and wrapped by the steep mountainous jungle that reached into the clouds which cooled the air almost enough to discourage us to dip into the cool waters of this paradise. I did say almost. We could have stayed here all day, but Miguel still had one more place for us to see. So, with smiles on our faces, we all trekked back to the van in anticipation of the next stop. These are some steep roads. Yes, hang on. It's hard to tell, but this is probably a 20... This is straight. Rate. This is what the angle it's at. It was a quick hour drive to our next destination, located in the town of Tuxla Chico, Chocolateria La Para. As you walk in, you first notice the wall of articles and awards, recognizing the generations of knowledge that have put this incredible woman on the world's chocolate stage. This was to be a delightful glimpse into La Para's chocolatiering traditions. Okay, so she's Doña Jose. She's the lady who I was talking to. She's the lady who won. Hola, mi amor, ¿cómo está? Hola. Who won the contest? She has chocolate in her hand, no. so there's a number. Of, I'm gonna take her hand. Le voy a agarrar la mano. So this is the place where she elaborates his chocolate, her chocolate. This normally is her office and her house. Okay. So the cocoa plant in Latin is called Tiobroma cacao. That means drink of the guts. Okay. That means that uh, for the pre-Hispanic cultures, the Aztec and the Mayans, they used to consider this as a drink only for royalty, not for everybody. This okay. is where the chocolate came from. So I will invite you to take one and just suck it. Do not chew it, the seed, okay? And let me know what does it taste. Don't 
chew it. Don't chew it. <laughs> it's it's slimy. so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. like it, My question, do they taste like chocolate? No. 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 Mm -hmm. But you know like that fruit. the chocolate comes from this sea. Mm -hmm. From here, what we are going to do is to walk that way. This was used as a coin for the pre-Hispanic cultures, for the Mayans and for the Aztecs. And they were used in these lands till 19th century, imagine. Once we dry the seed of the cocoa, what we are going to do is to put it this here. You're watching what the Mayans used to do 2,000 years ago. Of course, now we use the iron because it's faster to do. Normally, the Mayans used to use, uh, how do you say, clay. Yeah. Okay. okay, with sure. the clay. Because the instruments are almost the same. Okay. So we are going to do this to separate. Oh, okay, yeah. So if you see the process, it was just here. You see, Emma, you are getting the paste, and the cocoa has his natural oil that when we are molding, avoid stick on, her, on our hands. So if you see, now we are almost getting the paste. What a wonderful day filled with activities and attractions. And with Miguel's narrative explaining, educating, and entertaining us made it all more memorable. It was a long day, but we had just enough time to swing by Doña Panchita's, where everyone on the bus loaded up with enough tamales to have a delicious dinner to cap off the special day. Thanks, Miguel! Thanks for watching this week's episode of Onboard Lifestyle. A special thanks goes out to our patrons, whose generous support drives the production of our videos. Join our crew if you can. We packed a lot into one day and can't wait to explore more of this region. Come back next week to see what we find. See you then!